Okay, uh, in this particular lesson, what we're going to be looking at is solving quadratic equations by factoring, and we're going to do the problem-solving addition. Last In the last lesson, what we looked at was solving quadratic equations by factoring, uh, but there were no word problems. In this particular question, what it says is the height h in meters of a test rocket is modeled by the function uh, height is equal to negative 5t squared plus 35t plus 40, where t is the number of seconds since launch. After how many seconds does the rocket hit the ground? Um, what we learned in the previous lesson is in order to solve by factoring, we at some point have to make one side equal zero, or we'll have something like ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. This function does not look like that yet. However, if we read more carefully, we'll notice that what it says, after how many seconds does the rocket hit the ground, uh, that would suggest, rocket hitting the ground, would suggest that the height is equal to zero. Or in other words, we're going to substitute zero in for the height. So we have zero is equal to negative 5t squared plus 35t plus 40. And wouldn't you know that we have now a standard form function that we can solve by factoring. So if I, first of all, factor out the greatest common factor of negative 5, we'll have negative 5, and the remaining trinomial will be t squared minus 7t minus 8. And that remaining trinomial can be factored as t minus 8 and t plus 1, two numbers that multiply to negative 8 and add to negative 7. Uh, so in this particular case, our solutions would be when negative 5 equals 0, which is impossible, uh, when t minus 8 is equal to 0, which would be when t is equal to 8, and finally when t plus 1 is equal to 0, which is when t is equal to negative 1. Uh, since this is a word problem, we need to ask ourselves, do these answers make sense? Does it make sense that the time could be 8 seconds? Absolutely. How about negative 1? In this case, no, because we can't go back in time. Uh, this does not make sense. Okay. We can't have a negative in this particular solution. So our only solution uh, will be after 8 seconds. Uh, if you'd like to see this on a graphing calculator, here is the exact same function on a graphing calculator. And what we're looking here is at the path of the rocket. And what you can see after I hit graph is that the rocket was launched here and hit the ground, as you can see, at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, at 8 seconds. Uh, and negative 1 is also a solution. But in this case, since only the positive quadrant, or quadrant number 1, is in our solution set, only 8 seconds is a solution. Uh, in our next example, we're going to have to set up a quadratic equation before we even start solving. Uh, in this particular case, what we know is if we call this side a, b, and c, we know that a squared from the Pythagorean relationship plus b squared is equal to c squared. Or in other words, we know that x plus 2 squared plus x minus 1 squared is equal to 15 squared. Uh, this is not at the moment equal to 0, nor it is in, in standard form. So we're going to have to do uh, some mathematics before we put this into standard form equal to 0. So if I do that really quickly here, uh, we'll notice that this binomial product is x squared plus 4x plus 4. This binomial product is x squared minus 2x plus 1 equals 225. If we collect all of our like terms, we will end up with 2x squared plus 2x plus 5 is equal to 225, which is not yet in standard form equal to 0. Uh, so after we've subtracted 225, we have a standard form equal to 0 of 2x squared plus 2x plus minus 220 is equal to 0. If we factor out the greatest common factor, which in this case is 2, uh, we'll be left with a trinomial of x squared plus x minus 110. And in this case, this trinomial here can be factored as 2 times 
x plus 11 and x minus 10. Uh, so our two possible solutions here are uh, x equals negative 11 and x equals positive 10, which in this case, again, reflect on if those answers make sense. Is it possible for x to be negative 11? Well, no, because then this length here would be negative 9, this would be negative 12, which makes no sense. Uh, so x cannot be negative 11, so x can only be 10. Okay, and finally, uh, in our last examples, what we're being asked to do is to do the reverse of factoring uh, in a way. It's, it's giving you the roots. So if we had roots of negative 4 and 4, what would the factors be? The factor of this particular root to represent negative 4 as a root would actually be a factor of x plus 4. The factor that would give us a root of positive 4 is x minus 4. So the quadratic equation that would have those given roots would be x plus 4 times x minus 4 is equal to 0. And if I wanted to work my way backwards into standard form, I would simply simplify this, which will be x squared minus 16 is equal to 0. This is an equation in standard form that would have roots of negative 4 and positive 4. A little bit more difficult when we have fractions. I can show you an algebraic method. Uh, to come up with the factors. If x is equal to a half, if I first of all multiply both sides by 2, because what I want to do is create a factor equal to 0, I have 2x is equal to 1, and now if I subtract 1, I have 2x minus 1 is equal to 0. That's going to be one of my factors, 2x minus 1. Uh, my other factor is going to be when x is equal to negative 3 fifths. So if I multiply, both sides by 5. I have 5x is equal to negative 3, and add 3, I'll be left with another factor equal to 0 of 5x plus 3. So in other words, the quadratic equation in standard form uh, with those given roots would be 2x minus 1 is one factor, 5x plus 3 is another factor, and that's equal to 0. And finally, in standard form, that could be represented as 10x squared plus 6x minus 5x minus 3 is equal to 0, which would be 10x squared plus x minus 3 is equal to 0. That would be an example of a quadratic equation in standard form that has the roots of a half and negative 3 fifths.